you want to read about the art history right so that becomes a topic so similarly you need to you'll have to create a list of topics uh, another example for a uh, very small example that maybe uh, you can see okay that okay uh, there was one unesco uh, heritage site which was uh, recently added so that becomes again a topic that okay you need to understand you need to learn about all of the unesco heritage sites right so that becomes a topic so similarly you need to have a list of topics it can you can keep con keep adding uh, you know to the topics uh, to the list and then you can start you know practicing or reading about it the one more best way that i uh, that worked for me was leveraging the previous year question papers so what i did uh, to prepare for seed and uc etc not uc sorry for seed and nid uh, that i i used to look into the previous year question papers seed provides all of the previous year question papers and nid doesn't uh, but you'll get a sample paper uh, i mean the previous year question paper if you see one question uh, there'll be a question and then there'll be four answers four options sorry okay so it doesn't matter that i understand that there'll be only one question uh, one answer which will be correct but then you get topics to read about from those four options also so that's how i created a list of topics for me as well when i was preparing for uh, you know seed and entrance exam uh practice sketching uh sketching is the very crucial point of uh crucial part of uh majorly all of the design entrance exams um nid seed uh, i think mit uh, dst i think we don't have uh, sketching right in the jeet ma'am uh, visualization so there will be uh, visuals where then based on the visuals the student can answer that will be a part of mcq okay yeah okay understood so yeah i mean uh, that's one part but yeah, i mean there will be some uh, entrance exam which will have a, a whole section about drawing about sketching so you need to uh, practice sketching uh, regularly just start with something very basic and then as you progress on you'll uh, you know have more confidence and more uh, you know better sketching uh, skills uh, problem solving regularly yes uh, again look into look around yourself you'll find a lot of problems um, whether in your house or outside of your house uh, with your friends or anywhere you will find a lot of problem just try to uh, idea that okay how can you solve that problem doesn't matter if it, it needs to work out you know perfectly it's just that you thought about something uh, it gave you uh, you know a practice uh, thing for your mind and that will eventually help you in the exam because that becomes a muscle memory and then when you are writing the exam you don't need to uh, start from the scratch or you don't need to uh, think uh, start thinking from this scratch you'll have at least something in your mind and then you can start building from there so that becomes very helpful uh, when you have already prepared for uh, you know sketching and problem solving very crucial part is uh, time management again this becomes uh, i mean of course uh, this is very much related to uh, understanding the exam pattern also whenever i mean whatever exam uh, you are writing for first of all understand like, what is the exam pattern what all type of questions are there is there are there sections uh, section a section b section c some exams have as i already mentioned that uh, msqs uh, then mcqs and then numerical type questions so you need to you need to uh, make a strategy for yourself that okay what type of questions you are going to start uh, first for example if i take an example for me i knew that uh, numerical type of questions i can uh, work well and those are also the uh, majorly the scoring part of the exam so i already so i always attempted the numerical type question first but second second section used to be the msqs multiple selective questions where you if you select uh, i mean if you want to get a score on any question you will have to select all of the correct answers if you miss any one you won't get any uh, score so that was the problem when i written when i had written a uh, seed exam first time i actually went for numerical type questions and then i went for msqs what happened was that at the uh, end i didn't get enough time for mcqs and um, okay there was a message sorry yeah uh, next time when i uh, wrote the exam then i strategized about uh, time management that okay i'm going to do uh, numerical type questions first and then i'll jump to uh, mcqs because that's the again that that is the scoring part 
And if I, uh, and I'll come to the uh, MSQs later. So that's how you'll have to strategize about time management for yourself uh, based on the exam you are writing for, right? Um, again, then in general uh, thing, always try to be positive, think positive. Um, I know that they become this becomes a little difficult sometimes, but still uh, you need to be positive if you want to have a, you know, write a better exam. I'll take, a, I'll give you an example for uh, of myself again. Uh, but yeah, I mean, let me come to that later. Uh, stay healthy physically and mentally. Of course, uh, when you are preparing for design exam exams, it takes a lot of toll in your mind uh, and in your body also. Uh, I mean, when I was preparing for design entrance exams, I used to literally uh, continue study for four or five hours and then I'll sketch for a while and then, you know, uh, again, going back to study. That's not what I will uh, suggest for anyone to do. Take regular breaks, um, study for a while, uh, let's say set of timer for yourself for one hour or two hours, and then do some sketching, take a break, uh, go walk outside and then come back again, right? So that becomes, um, you know, a very crucial part that you need to be healthy physically and mentally when you are uh, writing the entrance exam, preparing for an entrance exam and writing for entrance exams. Uh, seek guidance from mentors or experts. Uh, it's never harmful to seek guidance from anyone. Uh, if you have someone in your uh, vicinity who can help you um, preparing for the entrance exam or in anything, uh, let's say you are having, uh, you are facing a mental problem and then uh, you are not able to focus on your uh, entrance exam preparation, just take help from them. Uh, seek guidance, talk to your parents, talk to your elder sister, talk to your uh, brothers, any, anyone, wherever you can get help from, right? So that becomes, basically you need to, you need to uh, be in control of yourself. If you're not in control of yourself, then it becomes a little difficult, you know, preparing for entrance exam also. And when you are writing for entrance exam, that then also it becomes a little difficult. So for preparation part, that's the uh, majorly uh, how what I would say that you need to uh, keep in mind. Coming back to my example, I'll tell you, uh, I had written, I'll give you uh, a seed, um, seed entrance examination experience. I had written seed exam exam, uh, exam in 2018. And um, as I already mentioned that I went for numerical type questions and then MSQs and then MS MCQs. I didn't get uh, a good rank that I could, uh, you know, uh, I could have gotten any uh, entrance in any uh, IITs. But later on when I, uh, strategize about my time management, um, understood that exam pattern that, okay, I need to go for uh, MCQs before MSQs, et cetera, et cetera. I really got in uh, a very good rank. Although I didn't go for C, I went for NID, but yeah, I mean, that's what I was trying to say that, okay, you need to be very uh, careful about all of these points when you are preparing. Uh, I think we can move ahead to the next slide. So I'll quickly uh, just... Uh... A uh, short announcement for all the eager students, you can uh, put your queries, questions, anything that is coming on to your mind and needs a better clarity and support on the chat. We are open for your queries for Anurag. So towards the end of the session, we'll have a Q&A, uh, a quick session towards the end after Ananya ma'am's presentation as well. Yeah, I mean, it's always better to interact, to have a interactive session. Uh, I mean, I can speak the story of myself, but yeah, I mean, I need to know the story from the student's point also. So if you have more questions, I think that'll be a better thing uh, for me also to help you. Right? Sure, we'll be reading out a few as and when yeah. we come. And yeah. uh, just a few uh, queries that they had, I'm sure uh, Anurag has covered uh, them. Uh, in the part of his uh, presentation yet and more to come yeah, yeah. i think uh, i just this might be the last slide i guess uh, but yeah i mean i just wanted to focus on uh, like we we understood about the entrance exams uh, we understood we started preparing also but the uh, i mean the major day whatever is is the exam day right how whatever you have done, uh, you know, in past four or six months, all of that comes to this day uh, on exam day, what you should do on the exam day. I'll talk about quickly about some of the points and then I can discuss more. Uh, 
of course you will start uh, the exam day very early because usually the entrance exam starts uh, very soon probably like 9 a.m something but you'll have to start your day very early because you'll have to reach the exam center etc uh, so for, i mean don't i would suggest that don't take any stress just make yourself comfortable before the exam day get enough sleep uh, eat well make yourself comfortable as much as you can and then go for the exam if you i mean that should be that's how you sh you should start your day uh, on the exam day or on any day in general but yeah i mean on exam day it helps a lot um, yeah i mean don't try to overthink uh, just relax anyway like if you think about okay i haven't read about that or, or i haven't read about that so don't need to overthink about all of that because anyway uh, whatever uh, you have prepared for it's going to be you know you are going to write on the exam so you don't need to take any stress about what you haven't done just think about whatever you have done you are more confident about that just go and write the exam right uh, very uh, important but yeah i mean uh, sometimes uh, we are in a hurry and then you know we tend to miss uh, these uh, points uh, of course i mean admit cards exam materials you should carry uh, with yourself so that you don't uh, you know to avoid any uh, last minute hassle uh, it's always better to be on time in fact reach the exam center early because uh, you know they'll start the whole process very early uh, you'll have to submit your bags phones etc etc and then you'll have to form a long queue they'll do the registration and then you'll have to enter uh, the exam center so it's always better to you know reach the exam center one or two hour early uh, go there just check about the situation how is the situation what is the process etc and then go uh, in the entrance exam center um some uh, mostly design entrance exams uh, happen in like december or january um, month so if you are in north india it's like winter's time make sure you are wearing uh, warmer warm clothes because i have done that i literally i was in an exam center writing an id exam and literally i was shivering because of the cold so that's not i would suggest for you although i got selected in id in nid but yeah i mean <laughs> those 3 hours were like the <laughs> worth uh, it. sorry i said worth it yeah it was worth it yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, don't make the mistake that i did um, yeah uh, and i think uh, if you have it's very like it doesn't happen to everyone but a cousin of mine he missed the exam because he got the dates wrong so wow. exams are generally on the sunday guys <laughs> so <laughs> your dates um yes. yeah even if you mix up the dates it's usually on a sunday so check your admit cards really carefully yeah, yeah correct uh, i think whatever exam uh, you are writing for they mo mostly all of the exams have a dedicated website uh, for it and you need to you should uh, visit the websites regularly so that if there are any updates you are aware of it and of course you'll uh, you'll have you'll get the dates to admit your uh, to download your admit cards etc there will be instructions written in your admit card also make sure you follow all of those instructions uh, you will avoid any last minute hassle um i think that must be the end of my uh, presentation but uh, i wanted to share one story uh, again about this uh, seed exam how i had written and what was my experience and what oh yeah okay during exam also yes uh, but yeah i mean i was just telling that uh, i'll tell you about my story how i had gotten uh, a, i mean great rank i would say in seed exam uh, but i'll tell you like how i had done it but yeah i mean during the exam uh, very uh, crucial that you need to read the in instructions very carefully uh, whatever exam you will be writing for you will be given the uh, question booklet or you will if you are uh, you know if you have the question in your uh, digital question paper basically there'll be instructions uh, uh, shown to you uh, up front in advance uh, so you need to read the instructions very carefully uh, you need to understand like what kind of questions or sections are there um, there might be different type of questions in a particular section, MCQs, MSQs, etc. Uh, you need to understand about how much, what is the number of questions. Every exam uh, mentions upfront that okay, these this is uh, the number of questions that you will be attempting in next three hours, right? If there is negative marking or not, 
uh, there are there are some exams which have negative marking for specific uh, sections. Maybe uh, for MSQs there won't be any negative marking, but uh, for MCQs there will be uh, negative marking. I'll I'll just quickly add that for DST there is no negative marking. So please make a note, students, for DST, MIT, ID, Indoor, there will be no negative markings. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then of course. Um, read the questions care very carefully uh, you have understood about the uh, like what kind of sections are there in the exam uh, as i mentioned that start with your strength for me i realized that okay uh, numerical type questions are my strength so i started with that then went to mcqs and then to msqs right so always start with your strengths because that becomes the scoring part right um, read about evaluation criteria if there are any if there are any um, uh, you know, drawing exam or sketching uh, question, sorry. So th they'll always mention the evaluation criteria uh, below the question. Read about that, uh, that, okay, what are the uh, evaluation criteria? Maybe they'll say that, okay, they will evaluate on basis of the uh, line quality of your sketching, right, uh, of your drawing, or uh, on the basis of perspective, how well you have uh, gotten the perspective in your drawing. So read about those evaluation criteria and then just try to... Uh, do that in the exam. Um, you don't need to uh, do uh, more than what is asked for, or you don't need to do less than what you are asked for. Just do whatever is asked. They'll, I mean, if you read the questions carefully, you'll very clearly know that what you need to do in that exam, in that question. Just do that much. Don't do anything extra. Uh, they won't, in, I mean, they will not consider anyway if you do anything extra, right? Uh, allocate your time wisely for each section. Of course, uh, when you are starting for the exam, just make a mental note that, okay, uh, for numerical type questions, you need to uh, put this much time for MCQs, this much time, and then rest of the time for MSQs. Uh, stay calm and positive. Uh, this is like the uh, major mantra tips and tricks, like whatever, uh, however calm and positive you can be during the exam, uh, that will always work in your favor. I'll tell you when I was writing the seed exam second time, I was literally humming the songs in my mind and then I was just doing the sketching. And that, I mean, I think uh, that really worked in my favor because I was not at all, uh, you know, anxious about the exam. I was very calm and positive and then it worked very well in my favor, right? So you need to be very calm. Of course, I understand that it becomes very difficult when you are actually in the exam center, uh, but yeah, I mean, there are some things that you can do. For example, what I do is like, uh, so mostly there'll be a huge crowd of students uh, standing outside the exam center and they'll be uh, talking about the, okay, uh, did you prepare for this? Did you prepare for this? Did you prepare for this? Right. And you will also listen to those and then you will start evaluating yourself that, okay, did you prepare for it or not? I'll suggest that just stay away from all of that. Uh, all of that people who are talking, just stay uh, in one corner. Just think about whatever you have prepared for and then just go into the exam. I always stay about, stay away from the people because then it starts, you know, uh, negative emotions in my mind. So I don't want that. So that's how you can prepare. Uh, that's how you can, uh, you know, uh, the, go about the exam. Uh, again, I'll focus on that. You need to start uh, preparing very early so that when you are on the exam day, you don't, uh, you know, stress about it much. There'll be uh, people who will be thinking that, okay, uh, is there any shortcut that I can prepare for this particular exam in seven days or one week or, you know, one month? Uh, you can do that. I'm not saying that you cannot do that. You can do that if, uh, you know, you'll work for it. But then if you start early, you take it slowly, slowly, and then you grasp everything uh, well and good. And then if you stand at the exam center, no, that's a different confidence level. Right. So that's why I'm, I just mentioned that uh, start preparing in advance and then, you know, uh, take everything, uh, learn everything gradually. Yeah. I believe it is out and out about time management. Yes. That's the skill uh, that while preparing, while you're giving the exam, I mean, as a student who's appearing has to keep in mind. And uh, many, many key points. Uh, they are the basic hints and tips. But yes, yes uh, stay calm, stay composed. Say, stay in uh, your sanity hmm. is what uh, I think uh, Anurag is uh, highlighting here as a, a student who is now, of, of course, at the pinnacle, close to the pinnacle. 
and uh, thank you so much anurag we will be surely again uh, catching up towards the end meanwhile you can also uh, check on the chat there are a lot of uh, questions for you yes. and uh, i now ask would ask ananya ma'am to uh, take over the session thank you ma'am thank you anurag thank you everyone thank, thank you, you. Was, uh, i wish i got this uh, you know seminar and i was preparing because i made so many mistakes that you mentioned also um i also did that why <laughs> <laughs> i don't really know that's why you missed i see the tip about not doing more than us um, i i remember for my bachelors i had not seen the i was just uh, appearing right after my 12th like the next day was my practical exam so with my board exams i was uh, appearing and uh, uh obviously like indian parents not taking design exams seriously <laughs> over boards of course and uh, so i didn't like i didn't prepare for it um, at all and i did not know the pattern of the exam hmm yeah uh, i ended up doing the exact same thing where uh, they had asked to draw the room from a lizard's point of view or something like that and i went in with my colors and my crayons yeah. my pens yeah. god i went ballistic and i did not have enough time to complete the other questions i still got in because uh, uh, just most i mean <laughs> to add just to add uh, mostly I, i mean i was also writing the nid entrance exam and the next person sitting to me he literally got in like all type of uh, pencil colors and what not and i was literally carrying one uh, carrying like couple of pencils and uh, a black pen that's it okay and if you see again i mean they will mention in the uh, exam that if you need to color you, you need to do the coloring they will mention it otherwise don't <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and id and id does that and id puts a clear instructions i don't think nif paper had that instruction hmm. but they, i mean they did say just to draw and i was the one who was coloring because i was i thought i was so smart and cool to be doing that <laughs> don't know that guys we all tend um, to do that <laughs> yeah and all the shading and all of that if they ask you to draw just draw and get out of there yeah. i think uh, that's a level of uh, enthusiasm <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i've always because of the unpreparedness i mean um, anurag talked about how when you're confident you feel really good and you uh, it's great giving an exam the opposite also worked for me really well because uh, same when i was giving my bachelor's exam i was like i'm not going to get in i'm not prepared for it i don't know how what the paper looks like so i'm not going to get in so let, let's just do whatever mm-hmm. and probably because of that i got in and the same thing happened during the nid exam although i was well prepared i had prepared uh, for about 6 months for it but then also nid like such a huge goal and you know the limited number of seats and everything i was like i'm not getting in it's okay it's a hard exam anyway so let's just and uh, i think that that does become the reason why you get in a lot of times because yeah. you're so i think also uh, like you said you know being well well thoroughly prepared i mean you would doubt yourself but i'm sure you have done so much of uh, working on the the course and all, all of the time is utilized well so well preparedness is also seems like a success uh, tip i think for the examinations and yes of course now ma'am it'll be uh, letting us there are lot quite a few queries i can read here about portfolio that is uh, again uh, kids are anxious about so yes okay guys uh, i made a one slide presentation and i'm <laughs> it's um, but it if it gets the work done uh, i'll share my screen and i'll show you like a couple of my projects whatever i showed in my portfolio um we had physical portfolios that time i mean we were allowed to have both digital and physical but i had come from a textile design background and i was appearing for nid um, so i thought that like more tactile more textures and more a physical portfolio would make much more sense for a portfolio like that um so that time i had a physical portfolio so very less projects are digitized with me but i'll show you whatever i have uh tell me if you can see my screen okay can you see it yes good It's coming up yes now it's all the last minute advice 
um yeah so um what should i include in my in my portfolio that is the main question that most of you all must have um I, those of you who are preparing in a coaching center specifically you do a lot of projects math classes and all of these things and you don't know how much and what and how to select and all of that so um the first round it's the written paper it also tells a lot about you but the portfolio round specifically is to know who the candidate is right it's a more personal um interaction that we have with the student so likewise for your portfolio i think your portfolio should embody you that's what uh, as a panelist um, when i was taking the interviews for avantika that is what i was looking for that the portfolio embodies uh, who you are as a person so um for projects that are related to um, you wherever you come from your background whatever your interests are um whatever the problems you see uh, around you so things that you derive from your personal experience um apart from that uh, any interests or hobbies you have try to include that in your portfolio like i'm sure there are uh, personal parts of our personalities that we really want to show through, you know in the interview and you're like if i include this they'll they'll know i'm so cool and so different from the others uh, and like you know you are you want the interview panelists to ask you those questions so the best way to stir the conversation in your favor so imagine if your interview round the panelists are quest asking questions about an area that you are interested in let's say you are very interested in cars or space or whatever the best way to have a conversation come to that would to be to include projects that are related to that right because you show me your portfolio i will obviously ask you questions related to that instead if you give me the scope to ask you anything and everything you might land in trouble so uh, you know you might there be there might be questions that you wouldn't be able to answer or it's a very stressful time an interview so maybe even if you know you can't come up with it so it's better you keep the interviewers in your uh, comfort zone you do that by including portfolios that talk about you so um yeah any personal portfolios any personal projects that uh, have any thing to do with you um also i would say um include quality more than quantity there is uh, i saw some question in the chat box as well where uh, someone has done a b tech or some really unrelated course and now are applying for design and they feel like uh, there are people who have done their bachelors in design and have better portfolios uh, better things to show and i have nothing so in that case where you have like very limited work even from that very limited work select limited work that you think is good don't uh, never go into a interview believing that you need an x number of projects you don't need five at least five at least 10 that's nothing that's bull crap your portfolio can be as many projects as you like as long as they are good authentic not uh, copied not heavily inspired um and things that you can talk about on a deeper level let's say i'll give you an example um, if you uh, i don't know if you put a project let's say doing a um, someone came with a fashion portfolio i remember and they said that they are uh, developing an ethnic collection for raymonds or something and they did not have and that person had done a bachelor's in fashion also which is why i was a little more expecting from the candidate Uh, that also matters your background matters as an interviewer i would know what your background is and i would you know gauge you according to that so uh, they did not know about um, what raymond make what lines they have uh, you know clothing lines do they even do traditional wear or not if they do traditional wear is there an a sub brand which in under which they do their traditional wear so they this person just had a series of kurtas and they just had to select a mock client and they selected raymond and they did there was no research so anything that you include have a basic level of research at least that when we ask you questions we we want you to know about your projects at least right uh, why those particular projects is what i answered uh, projects that uh, so if you let's say you you pick something that you think is a relevant skill and that you don't have let's say you think drawing is very important 
and everyone in my class is good at drawing and i suck at drawing what will i do you can't one can't clear design exams without drawing that so we don't have to think like that uh, not everyone needs to have every skill set um, whatever your skill sets are just work on those choose projects that feature those how many projects um, there is no set uh, um criteria as to how many projects but i would say if you just you know if you really want a framework under which you want to make your portfolio maybe include um, one that shows your skill one that shows your interest one that's a really problem solving project driven thing where you show the entire process so basically one project that shows one thing and then another project that shows uh, another thing what happens a lot of times is that students put 20 sketches five sketches are enough to tell me that you are good at sketching i don't need to see 20 especially if it they are in the same domain if you are doing like you know one that shows that i'm very good at anatomy one that shows that i'm great with details one that shows that i can do traditional media well that is okay uh, but if i have a series of landscape paintings it's not adding anything it's kind of wasting my time seeing 20 paintings of the same kind so be wise and uh, shortlist on basis of that on what you want to show um uh, which projects should i focus on and where uh, where do i put all my stuff um, i i'm talking about the kind of softwares or all of that you know how to present your portfolio if that is something that you are focused on um uh, like i said i was coming from a textile background and i was appearing for apparel both of those are very uh, 3d uh, things and you know uh, things that where the texture the fabric uh, you want to uh, touch you want to feel you want to you know you have to be uh, able to see it in a physical space to understand it better both those uh, fields were like that which is why i made a physical portfolio if if you are if i uh, was the let's say a ui designer or most of my work was digital i would be showing a digital portfolio which would mo make more sense um during my interview at nid they also asked me uh, so what happened is um, i'll tell you like a brief story of um, how um, and why i started uh, this entire design journey i was uh, i was good, good at sketching and like creative stuff uh, since childhood and uh, i only i was from a small town there was no access to coaching so i didn't know a lot of um, things about design uh, small town mein you only know interior design fashion design um <laughs> what yeah. else yeah that's all you know and uh, so i thought i'll be a fashion designer and uh, so nift was the only college i knew i did not even uh, know an id and um, uh, none of the private colleges also because i didn't have access to the information and uh, so i ended up, i didn't get uh, i told you how great my I think she got stuck. I think she's frozen. Hmm. That's right. Might be internet drop. She might be joining in. Yes, a... because uh, uh, ma'am did share. There is an expectation, something like this. Hmm. so we give uh, a little time uh, to ma'am uh, to join again and uh, meanwhile uh, we see here a few questions yeah we can go about the question and uh, at least for the entrance exam yeah design entrance exam Yeah, so yeah. Uh, there is something like uh, from how to prepare the sketch questions. Yes. What I can, I can, Risha. I think I can go by the comments from top to bottom. I think I can just. Yes. So, will I be able to get a job? This is something uh, that, uh, of course, you can come down to uh, MIT ID and uh, look into the placements and how we are going ahead. with that all the programs 
of course every institute is uh, scaling high in terms of design portfolio we leave it to uh, ananya ma'am and uh, yes eligible ranks and cut off yes ma'am is here so there was a uh, unexpected or expected uh, flash <laughs> yes sorry so i was saying yeah so, and then i did my textile four years and then i thought i um, i'm not where i want to be in life um i'm not you know whatever <laughs> and i thought i should do a masters and learn new things and um, uh, during that time masters you had to fill um, uh, two exam uh, uh, i i got zoned out because of the <laughs> it nothing ha ha you could fill two preferences for um, your discipline and um, i filled uh, graphic design and i filled apparel design apparel design i felt filled because it felt like a natural progression from textile design and i did not get fashion design during my bachelor right so um i but i was like really vying for graphic design and i uh, wanted to study that and i again did not make the cut off for that and i cleared apparel design and um, then i had no work uh, related to apparel design for my portfolio so what i did was all my skill sets that i had as an illustrator um, i used that in my apparel design portfolio so i'll show you some of my projects tell me if you can see my screen can you yes it is visible okay so this let's say, this was one of my projects uh what i did was i um, i used to make comics and all really bad work <laughs> um but yeah i made a comic on how they make chicken curry garments and i i saw a problem um that uh, people don't realize how labor intensive it is to make craft based products uh, because of uh, you know how less we pay the embroiderer and the craft people because of that because people don't see the value in handcrafted things um so i made this comic that was supposed to be on the packaging and everything so that uh, when the everyone likes to read comics if there's a comic on a packaging you cannot not read it right it's it's very engaging and um, people of all ages and genders and uh, all kinds of people would read any kind of sequential narrative I think that you have to click again on the yeah we just uh, missed it yeah. and uh, so yeah i i made the comic and put it as a part of packaging and marketing device so that to educate people how um, chicken curry garments are made so instead of making a garment i did and then i did like a few prints and uh, something like that okay and then i yeah i, I made mock ups and i made a physical mock up also this was my physical mock up he <laughs> so shabby uh, but yeah i've grown since you guys have a look back at your work and be like e <laughs> why did <dude>, why <laughs> yeah but um, uh by skills might have improved but i still stand proud of how i used my skills and my uh, what was special about me into a project that was related to apparel but uh, you know still using my skills and showing what i am all about uh, so st storytelling ha happened to be my strong suit and i did that and uh, i remember the interviewer ended up asking me if i um, have instagram or anywhere that i put my work and he like literally took my phone and started scrolling through my instagram and uh, checking all the posts and everything so because they wanted to see more of this and then they also suggested me that i try um, animation and all of that so um, and i got and there were students that had uh, you know bags filled with clothes which was like much more relevant to apparel design they had they got suitcases and everything and they had uh, done a lot of people had done fashion for their bachelors also so they had much stronger portfolios but uh, because my portfolio had something that they did not have and most colleges even uh, mit id 
we want to select a diversity of students uh, we try to have you know one student from uh, uh let's say every geographical location or one student from different different backgrounds different different skill sets you want to put together a class that uh, as diverse as they can be so that there's a lot to learn from each other design is a very practical field and we want to do that in a class so the more unique you show your projects to be the more you unique you show yourself to be the better it is uh, for you, for your chances at any exam of this sort uh apart from that uh, apart from using your skills and your interest uh, you should also pick up projects that speak to you um so like this one project that ma'am also talked about i did that uh, while i was still at nid and uh, oops and uh, this project talked about um uh making low cost toilet equipment it's not opening right now the uh, but uh, lavatory yeah the, the, uh, yeah so i had made a foot operated uh, toilet where because uh, of course there are sensors and everything available like the tech is very much available for you to have build a washroom where you don't have to use hands the concept was hands free lavatory during covid times so that we don't infect other people toilets are one place that everyone is going to have to use if as much as social distancing you practice uh, everywhere else you have to you know go and use the contaminated loo so how can we make the loo as safe as possible and uh, so uh, while making the hands free toilet we did everything foot operated and everything was mechanical so that it's low on cost because you can't put very sophisticated system in let's say in a train toilet uh, you know the costs are high and there's a, lo a large footfall also a lot of people are going to use that loo so you can't have very sophisticated um, motion sensors and everything in an uh, in a train loo so uh, picking projects that you actually care about seeing problems that you identified um, let's say your grandfather has uh, some you know their hands or whatever they have low mobility uh in any of the joints or any kind of problems that you see in your immediate family or uh, those projects you can talk about better and you because you are a more empathetic designer then you see it daily your research is better because you see that those problems daily this is one project uh, i also deeply care about sustainability so i had one project that had um, a lot of random textile watches made from uh, uh, materials that were uh, waste and i used them to add value to a textile not great photos but just documentation this is from compressed plastic like heat pressed plastics this was this one was from a, a jute burlap bag or something and yeah all the buttons i had and like very random stuff but uh, all of so be, uh, i was sitting for an apparel portfolio uh, apparel portfolio and personal interview round but i did include my textile work so you can do that as well you can um, let's say if you're an engineering student and uh, you made let's say an app for um, your pro one of your projects engineering students do that right they have to make like apps and all sometimes i know that <laughs> um and so let's say you worked on the back end and you worked on the programming and everything but as a design student you could also develop ui for it you could make a logo for um, your app you could make uh, just landing screens you can make so you can something that you've already made something that already speaks about your background but then you show your interest as a designer by including your new skill sets and including skill skill sets that are relevant for design um let's see what else uh then uh, another um, great way to be uh, original interesting and um uh, 
a good candidate would also be to take on cognizance of whatever times we are in being like so basically showing sensitivity um about an awareness about whatever is happening so if you take like a hot topic um maybe all the wars that are going on or any kind of conflict or as a lot of like i i did a lot of work during um covid and uh, i made these uh, uh google map uh, destination screens as to like how you can only travel inside your home now <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was called uh travel destinations 2020 and uh, it's like just worked as the inside of a fridge and all of that so it was uh, global yeah it's so it's global <laughs> for everyone <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh, and i i um i i got let's say i got this idea and he, like the only place you can travel to right now is the corners of your home that's the basic idea now um one thing that i do um for uh, getting like the same portfolio getting jobs and all also right later um some of your projects you will end up keeping in your professional portfolio also so what i do to make uh, this more relevant for people who see um art like this is um associated with a company or with a brand and i did it like i did it like a marketing campaign for google maps who is now encouraging for people to like not travel or be inside their homes and i did that so i took the illustration uh, that i wanted she stuck again you just need to unmute yeah i'm saying did i there is that my call to stop talking because i keep dis- getting disconnected <laughs> okay uh what else um nothing that i can think of let's go to the question let's see if i have anything in the folder uh that i want to talk about and then of course the difference between apparel and uh, fashion design and prints and designs and i'm not good at uh, the digital part of uh, portfolio and uh... um so no it's not someone wrote is it necessary to have digital work digital no, it's, not. Worst. it's not necessary to have digital work but but uh, what happened during covid is a lot of interviews and uh, these things were carried out online and uh, so everyone just had to you know convert their physical portfolios into digital portfolios and now a lot of universities will keep that practice on because you know it saves you from uh, flying in into the college and like whatever center and uh, so it's a lot easier to carry out interviews digitally so a lot of people have switched to digital so it's always good to have a digital portfolio handy now in these times and circumstances because you never know what the uh, university might demand of you if uh, what does actually apparel design apparel design means uh, it's basically designing of clothing but functional so um, how for fashion design you study you know what are the trends and what are the uh what will come in fashion what is fashionable and what is not fashionable for apparel design we discuss more on the functional aspect of it. think of it like a product design where you so any yes. kind of uniforms or let's say you have to design an astronaut suit will you go to a fashion designer like you will want something utilitarian and functional not something funky and cool um, the funky and cool True. is also good True. but yeah you need functionality and all of that so that where uh, an apparel designer will come in who will look at the garment from the perspective of uh, what color should we be using for let's say minimum heat retention or something like that you know it's mostly functional and utilitarian and not a lot to do with aesthetics although we do get into that from time when right so there are some more queries to do with the software with software photoshop and illustrator so that bit is again into the digital aspect of it okay so um uh, guys especially for bachelors uh, for masters we have like a little
I think the I expect you to be designers already. We uh, we understand that you have appeared for an exam and you are going to be studying to become a designer. So we don't want you to be perfect at everything. So likewise, we don't need you to know all the softwares that you think are relevant. Uh, Illustrator and Photoshop and Figma and whatever you want to learn, it's good. Uh, nothing goes to waste. It's a good skill to have. We will appreciate it if you know. And if you're self-taught, that's all the more appreciation worthy. But it is not, your admission is not contingent on you knowing any particular software. Otherwise, we would have mentioned it in the syllabus. If it's not mentioned in the syllabus that you have to know this, then you don't have to know it. No, and true, correct. So there is also one uh, query here which says, uh, is portfolio A4? That's a short and sweet question. No, portfolio is whatever size. Uh, see, uh, some of your projects can be landscape. Some of your projects will be portrait. Some of will, them will be square and all of that. Let's say you have different art um, artworks and there are different sizes and all of that. So you have to make an evaluation on your own. Put all your work um, and make an evaluation as to what, uh, you know, uh, size, page and what uh, should it be landscape portrait what size should my portfolio be what way should my portfolio be basis on the projects that you have so let's say you have designed most things for um, for the web and most of your you let's say you are a digital game aspiring digital game designer and you have designed a lot of ui for game and they're all you know in landscape uh, the size of a laptop screen so it makes sense for your um, you know, portfolio then to be landscapes and in the uh, sizes and dimensions as you see fit. There is no correct way to have a portfolio. Uh, no particular size. And I think that should be uh, uh, quite uh, clear for that query. And uh, some of the queries now for Anurag that I can see from uh, Anmol here. It says, uh, can you tell about time management? And uh, of course, yeah, there was a query of a part B uh, drawing uh, part also that mm -hmm. ha there has been a revision like Anurag has uh, shared and he can elaborate also about that. Uh, Indrajit ma'am, do you want to pick uh, the comments or should I go like from top to bottom? Yeah, uh, I was just seeing actually uh, you can uh, uh, do the same. Okay. I'll help you as it is goes fine with us. And uh, because I think uh, quite a few uh, uh, part has been already covered uh, by you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We can just. Uh... Okay. The first question is how to prepare for sketch questions. Sketch questions. Yeah. Yeah. Kids uh, are ready. yeah. I mean, you can start with very basic things. Uh, first of all, like, don't try to learn sketching. Uh, you know, don't try to learn the whole composition at once break it down to uh, its components. For example, in a composition, what all could be? There could be uh, people, there could be objects, uh, there could be places, right? And then there'll be perspectives. So first of all, learn these, all of these things individually, sketching, uh, learn sketching people, uh, learn sketching objects, uh, objects in again, uh, different, different uh, views. Maybe you can try like having a front view, a top view, a side view, and then you can have an isometric view. And then of course, a perspective view, right? So that becomes uh, a, a, a habit, a natural habit to draw all of these uh, these objects, people individually. And then you can come to drawing a composition, a whole composition, right? So same objects kept in a hall, uh, some same people standing in the hall, and then it becomes a whole, uh, you know, composition with perspective. So that's how you can pre start uh, preparing for sketching questions. Go like one by one, start learning people individually, objects individually, perspective individually, and then combine all of these together in a composition. Um, will I be able to get a job abroad after completing my bachelor's in India? I think we are talking about uh, the design entrance exam. Start with. So we are, yeah. <laughs> we just had the start. We'll, yeah, first we'll finish the education and then we'll go to the job part. <laughs> How to prepare portfolio for MDES if you have done BTEC and don't have any presentable work? Okay. Uh, so if you are preparing for, uh, if you are going for MDES, uh, you'll be choosing one specialization, right? Uh, 
it could be information design it could be graphic design it could be anything else so whatever discipline you are uh, applying for make sure that you have those sort of works uh, majorly if you are if you have done your btech so probably i mean see whatever interests you what kind of discipline interests you if is it animation or is it uh, film and video or is it information design or is it interaction design etc etc right so if it is interaction design uh, so you will probably have some uh, application or some uh, websites designed right so you can include those in your portfolios uh, if you have interest more in film and video or if in graphic design so you can have those sort of works i mean of course you will have to uh, produce those those works but i mean these sort of uh, works you can have in your portfolio when you have done btech and then trying to go for mdes um so one example basically has projects lying around uh, as in it even people who have done their bdes and all a lot of times their projects are also the class projects and not so anyone can make projects decide on you can always do personal projects you don't need a sponsor a company or whatever decide your personal projects write make lists of things that you want to include in your project um skill wise interest wise what seems exciting to you that's like one way to uh, that's how i i usually choose what projects to work on because what excites me what um, what i think would come out like super great and you know what gets you pumped up and uh, so you could also go no one has projects you have to make them and uh, be very realistic with how much you can do in a month or something one example that comes in my mind uh, again uh, one of my friend was in nid uh, she was from btech background and then she has done uh, i mean she has she was in uh, information design so you need to see like first of all like what do uh, information design consists of right information design mostly has data visualization and ui ux so when you are preparing your portfolio prepare on the basis of uh, what is already taught is being taught in information design right so when she had uh, her portfolio so in data visualization again we, i mean she didn't had any idea about like data visualization as such uh, when she was preparing for the entrance exam but what the one project that she did was uh, that she actually uh, color coded every feeling how she was feeling in a day uh, if she is feeling bad then probably red if she is oh. feeling good and then gray, green and then she is feeling neutral then yellow so it becomes like uh, from day to day it becomes like a data visualization right and then if you combine all of those months it becomes a whole chart whole infographic of okay. how you have felt uh, you know throughout the year so that's how you that's how you prepare that's how you create your own projects right uh, one example could be like you click you click a lot of pictures in your phone right uh, every photo has its uh, location information right so you can uh, analyze that okay where all you have clicked most of the photos right uh, what kind of people you have in your photos so that th this sort of becomes a project of yourself depends uh, like where what uh, discipline are you actually applying for and then based on those uh, you produce the work for uh, you know your portfolio could you explain more about cutoffs eligible ranks i think cutoffs uh, every institute has its own uh, cutoffs based on their uh, uh, you know entrance exam all of this information you will find uh, in a respective uh, institutes websites what to do to improve with ideation for creative part of drawing how to find unique ideas okay uh, there is no shortcut uh, it's only practice uh, how much you practice it will become uh you know uh, again i mean one you'll you'll practice one thing and then when you will go to second uh, practicing second thing you will have first uh, already in your mind right similarly as you will be on 10th uh, ideation 10th drawing then you will already have those previous nine drawings in your mind right so that's how uh, you know you create things eventually it's not like th that you will uh, go sit in a sitting and then you know you'll create something unique that's that, that doesn't happen uh, yeah. one more way of uh, coming up with unique ideas it's a very long process but is to actually lead a like a little rich life as designers uh, especially people who are like preparing for it uh, for design intenses like work on yourself a lot um, in the sense that watch a lot of movies watch a lot of uh, tv series even the instagram that you're scrolling just you know follow interesting people follow interesting pages don't consume uh, trash content like stuff that adds no value 
stop doing that for a while just think of it as a you know way to prepare your exams while also having fun so all your entertainment you should be ideally replacing it with infotainment uh one way i used to do that was like i watched a lot of history and epic and geog- uh, national geographic and all of these uh, like i watched a lot of tv one day i would watch the tv and i would only like draw all the logos that would come during ads and i that was me practicing speed sketching also doing my logo practicing while watching tv while telling my parents i'm preparing is <laughs> a key so, element actually the common observation of life which is also a part of uh, the any design uh, test of course dst yes. but yeah your yeah, common there are no unique ideas and there are no you new yeah, ideas you can find it printed anywhere that is like when you are experiencing life every day every moment yes and uh, um, next i see how do i go on about mit id dat for avantika university i think uh, yeah that I... is like of course uh, over to us uh, mit id that is uh, for avantika university is the design scholarship test uh, towards the end of uh, the session uh, like just 15 minutes before we end i'll again share the registration link please please the ones who already registered for the design scholarship test dst they need not do it it is only for uh, the last minute ones who can uh, still uh, you know just join we are closing the lines today any which ways but that is the entrance test and uh, yeah once you've done the application we'll share the previous sample papers with you also so you can prepare uh, in the coming week how to prepare for sketching part so uh, yeah i think i already explained uh... again i mean sketching will require a lot of practice you need to do it regularly just i mean just include in it in your daily routine make sure that you are at least doing like 10 to 20 sketches daily uh and then you will see that how i mean you will be surprised how your sketching has improved it's that, yeah it's a matter of lot of practice yes the uh, mit dst exam will be appeared from a test yes and- it is online it is very very much online you can do it from your home from the comfort of the place that you are you would need a good uh, uh, like a good uh, internet support and a device a laptop or a computer hmm. uh, 11 to 2 that's the timing from morning 11 up to 2 afternoon on 17 december sunday uh i am from science stream and i recently discovered my passion for design hmm. and i think this uh, just reminds me of a friend ananya ma'am just shared about who was uh, had nothing to do with design of course till she just discovered i need guidance about things to learn history that's what uh, ma'am did share when to prepare as i have my boards this okay. is like, okay. universal yeah. agony for a class yeah. yeah let me take this question so mega uh, you don't need to stress about anything uh, i'll tell you the reason why because i am also from science stream okay i didn't study art i didn't study design in my uh, school and i also had my uh, boards right it's just that if you are uh, you are discovering about your passion about design first of all if it is your passion it should not stress you if it is stressing you then probably you need to rethink right art and design is a is a stream where you should not feel stressed about anything right as i mean more you will do art or design your uh, you know you should not feel stressed about it first of all so try to uh, be calm don't uh, worry that you are from science stream so you will have any problems you will not okay uh, you need guidance about the things to learn history process etc um as i already mentioned that take help from the previous year question papers for whatever design entrance exam you are writing for okay take help from those question papers pick on the top pick the topics uh, from those question papers and then start reading about it as you will read more you will feel more confident and then your stress level will be uh, you know out of the equation okay uh, i i understand that you also have your boards as well so when um i mean right now when you have your boards give more priority to the boards i will suggest and then parallelly you uh, learn about design art stage etc etc and once your boards are done then you can uh, you know give more time uh, to this okay that's how uh, maybe you can uh, prepare 
uh what do you prepare for four to five hours sir is that about <laughs> yes uh as you already mentioned that there is a lot of reading to be done uh when you will start learning about artistry and design history you know you will actually start uh enjoying it and then you won't realize when uh those four or five hours went away i was just trying to mention that uh in a single sitting don't try to you know push yourself that you are sitting for four to five hours just take regular breaks that's what it's... i was meaning uh this said nishan i had done my bachelor's in bcom and now i want to do master's in design i had done two boot camp courses in ux ui designing i want to ask what problem do i face while transitioning my career to design and what are the benefits get the student who done their bachelor's in designing okay <laughs> hmm uh again i mean i don't know if uh you have not mentioned are you planning to go for masters or not uh, if you are planning to go for your masters and i see that you have done two boot camp courses in ux ux ui designing so i'm assuming that you have more uh, you have interest more towards ux ui designing uh, when you are going for master exams uh, they i mean you won't you you will not be evaluated based on what you have done in your bachelor's doesn't matter if you have done btech doesn't matter if you have done pcom doesn't matter if you have done bts okay uh, what will matter will be your performance on entrance exam uh, your performance on studio test and your performance on interview and portfolio how well uh, you have created your portfolio how well uh, you uh, have gone about the interview that will be only thing which will which will matter uh, i don't think there are any extra benefits uh, for the students who have uh, done their bachelor's in designing so it's the same for you uh, being a bcom student uh, or for bts students okay i'm appearing for mit mantika exam on 17 i had doubt about how it is going to be conducted online okay i think uh, uh, yes so we'll be sharing the admit cards on uh, 13 december all the students who are appearing for dst uh, 17 december online and uh, the joining instructions the web link your admit card all of it will be mailed to you so um, i'm sure that will be uh, helping you with that query uh, can you tell about time management during paper also uh, um, what question questions spend can you for to spend more what time presentation of questions like should we need to draw or attempt questions like how we see online on various profiles okay uh okay so first thing uh, about time management uh, during our paper time so uh it will differ from entrance exam to entrance exam uh, for example mit id uh, entrance exam has 3 hours and then we'll have uh, mcqs msqs right uh, indrajit ma'am correct me yes too. yes yes yeah so question would be M, uh, first mcq then followed by the logical reasoning uh, part of it the section and uh, towards the end we'll have uh, the msq yeah so i mean a uh, general idea that mcqs are usually uh, a scoring part of the exam because you know you need just need to have one answer correct and then you get the full marks uh, so i'll suggest that if you are trying to you know manage your time so go for the mcqs first um, then maybe msqs because you know you need to have all of the correct answers uh, mentioned so go for msq and probably the third part it depends on person to person whoever is more comfortable with uh, whatever type of questions but yeah, i mean that's how probably you can manage your time again uh, i'll stress on the preparation before the exam if you prepare well before the exam then you will already you already will have a, a very good understanding of how much time you need to spend on what section okay if you just go for the exam uh, then you are trying to figure out in the uh, exam then that is not going to work uh i mean again yeah i mean prepare well uh, tell about the presentation of question like should we need to draw or attempt questions like how we see on online various profiles okay uh what i understand from this question is that i think you are trying to uh, understand that what level of drawing should be in the exam as you see in on various profiles uh, online uh so i mean whichever entrance exams will have drawing as a part of entrance exam it will it they'll allow you like uh, i think around 2 hours mostly exams will give you 2 hours and there will be multiple questions uh, there won't be any one single question um, in the exam there'll be like couple of uh, let's say around 4 to 5 questions of drawing okay so you i mean you'll have to first of all you will have to attempt all of the questions and then 
the level of drawing you need to uh, decide on the basis of that question's marks. If there is one question which is uh, of 50 marks, and if there is other questions of let's say let's say the part B, I mean the drawing part is 100, uh, 100 marks, one uh, marks, one question is 50 marks, and the other is like 20, 20, 10, something like that, right? So 50 marks uh, question essentially should have more uh, details, more, uh, uh, you know, uh, I would say like how you have written that, uh, how you, you see online or various profiles, but yeah, I mean, you don't spend a lot of time on 20, 20, 10 marks, right? So that's how you can, uh, you know, present your questions based on the marks. Does portfolio need to be A4? I think it's already answered. Is your cat exam? Okay. Can painting also be included? Yes, for sure. Uh, I mean, you can take the pictures of those paintings and then you can probably, uh, I mean, if you are carrying the physical painting, then probably you can, but otherwise you can uh, print also your portfolio. I think somebody has mentioned that can they print the portfolio if they have like physical heavy works, you can do that. Um, Guys, paintings can be included, but um, I would suggest that uh, the the standards keep increasing every year. So let's say maybe you have a painting. I would rather it not be just a painting. Maybe you could you know name the painting, write little, like a description about it. Yeah. Make it like more rounded as a project. You know, yeah. maybe you can talk about why you. Um, I'm not saying like put a bunch of text on it, but any project. It if it has like a certain level of depth and it just does not show me your skill, you paint very well, great, good for you. But if there is a project there, you know, if you if you've painted an interesting subject, if you've painted a picture that you have clicked, so if the painting is super super original, maybe you can talk about where you put that picture and all of that. If I give you like five minutes to talk about that piece of work, you should have something to say than uh, hi, I did this with acrylic on canvas. Like that's just two lines, right? And you have nothing to say about it. So uh, even if you want to include paintings, I would uh, ask you to make it a little more well-rounded as a project and uh, not it just be painting. Hmm. Exactly. And another, uh, another pointer uh, would be to not name things that are obvious. Like pet peeve of mine, I don't know if uh, every interview I had this, but uh, like a portfolio that's called portfolio on the front page. Or uh, a paint a section of paintings called paintings, yeah, digital work. Like uh, naming your projects like that, look makes the it it feels redundant. I can see it's a painting. Why are you naming it? Instead, if you gave a name to your painting, that would be a lot more better because now I know that what perspective you're looking at the painting from. So calling your portfolio, I'd rather you give a name to your portfolio, even if it's your name and you don't want to give a name name things that we don't know so that it does not waste our time okay so next is for animation which institute is better in id and whistling boards international mumbai i think uh, that uh, would uh, completely depend on how you do your entrance test basically when do we have to show our portfolio and okay when do we have to show our portfolio so we have a date, PI uh, date for uh, uh, MIT ID Indoor, which will be 26 December. So that is, uh, we'll, you'll be called and mailed for the same. And that is uh, the uh, PI, personal interview. That's what ma'am had mentioned, right? Per Physical or online? The portfolio? It will be online. It will be online uh, for DST, uh, the exam and the PI booth. So, yes, uh, the difference between fashion design and apparel, ma'am has uh, explained that. Do we have maths for NID? There's no maths, maths for NID. Uh, it just, I mean, if there is any question based on numbers, those will be mostly those logical reasoning sort of questions. There won't be any maths which will require you to learn any formula and all, and then you'll have to put values. Those sort of uh, maths won't be there um, in the NID exam. Right. Uh, Ma'am, how can we answer part B? We've already uh, given you an overview of there's some revision in the paper. So a part B or sections, uh, but out and out, it will be uh, the way uh, Anurag has uh, given a gist of basically what would be covered MCQ, MSQ. Yes, Indore, Pune, MIT, we are two different locations, but we come under the same group, MIT. 
right? So there are two different locations. Of course, Shillong is there, Sholapur as well. But yes, we are just at different places in India. What if I don't have much sketches of dresses in my portfolio? That's fine. Um, <laughs> depends on what college you're appearing for. Uh, NIF does not have a portfolio around as far as, as I know. So if you're appearing for um, NIF, you wouldn't need a portfolio. For MIT, we do have a portfolio around for fashion and BDES. Where I don't necessarily want to see sketches of dresses, but let's say you want to do fashion design, but you're more interested in fabrics and embroideries and prints. That is also fashion, right? So as long as you have that, right, it doesn't matter. Uh, you don't necessarily need, there's no necessary uh, criteria that needs to be there in your portfolio. But if you're so interested in fashion, uh, I think you would have gotten into sketching dresses, right? I mean, that's what the most people do. So uh, why don't you like, sketch a few? Maybe it wouldn't hurt. But yeah, it's not necessary or anything. So something, uh, this is uh, for both Anurag and Ananya, does uh, prints and designs come to your mind naturally? Because it doesn't for me. <laughs> um, I think Ananya ma'am already talked about uh, that. I mean, if it doesn't come to you naturally, then try to in, uh, indulge yourself in sort of content where you can get inspiration from. It could be movies, it could be uh, any article it there are a lot of design prompts also that you could follow um, you know there are a lot of these challenges that you could there's like this yes. Inktober challenge and uh, I don't, so many challenges on all of these social media platforms that you could see there are a lot of prompts there are a lot of you know you could just it could there are a lot of um, other kind of prompts that, like one thing that I used to do uh, for my um uh, I, I worked as a publication uh, design person. So I used to do layouts and I used to do illustrations for uh, books, uh, for mostly like kid books. But uh, so in order to prepare the portfolio for that, I sometimes I would, uh, you know, illustrate already existing novels. Sometimes I would, let's say maybe a very simple concept like what if I did Cinderella, but I made it like all, like replace the human characters with that. And then like it's in there. So very, it doesn't have to be a very eureka and very, uh, the idea can be very, very simple and your execution can be wonderful or the uh, prompts can be taken from, I, like I use a lot of literature wale prompts. Uh, there are a lot of prompts online on Pinterest and these sites that are for uh, writing stories. So they give you like a premise or a plot. And then, so I do that for my illustration work where I'll take, prompts that are meant for writing but I do that for uh, to get ideas interesting ideas for illustrations so uh, just watch more work be involved in this space and you will have more and more ideas every day cool and uh, do you have any tips or tricks to make your portfolio digital or handy appealing and interesting and how to have a story to your portfolio if you can't make one I think that is from Arya. Talk about? Um, tips and tricks. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if, uh, uh, if there are any tips or tricks, but the uh, that think of yourself as someone, think like the audience and you'll get a lot of answers. Like uh, when I evaluate my work, I think if an interviewer is looking at it, will they be tired reading so much? So I reduce that. Like think thinking like that uh, really helps. Uh, you know, it, this is a way where you'll understand if I have a lot of repetitive work, maybe I'll take one or two projects out because it's a lot of repetition. Um, and uh, making a portfolio digital or handy. I am not sure. I can't speak about everyone, but I don't think the way you present your work has to do so much like digital or physical or those things don't matter as much as the projects first of all and also uh, there's a certain level of uh, perfectionism or maybe I don't know what to call it but 
even when you're making your digital portfolio or physical portfolio, like just seeing the margins are all right. Everything is neatly cut. If it is happening digitally also, there are no crooked lines. There are no, um, you know, just like clean it up, make it look professional um, and uh, avoid spelling mistakes. Uh, and uh, just like very basic stuff that you would do anything for a school project. Do, do those things for a personal project oh. also. True. Although no one is here to reprimand you ki margin keda ke hai. But <laughs> just those, uh, um, people who have been in design for very long, they have a very quick eye. I mean, you have to be a lot of people who have to be a lot of people who have to be a lot of people who have to be a every flaw that you will have in your portfolio, I will see that first. Every spelling mistake, my eye go there first. Every crooked line. Every time you didn't use a paper cutter and a scissor, scissor se tera hai paper. Paper cutter se ekdam seedha katta hai. So every time you make those kind of mistakes, also it's very we are very quick to see those. So just be like super. So let, let me just remind everyone, Ananya ma'am is a faculty, yes, and this is right uh, from. Uh, uh, correct me from the horse's mouth. So please, please uh, make note of all these key points when you're doing the portfolios. <laughs> and so just last 15 minutes, we will quickly rush into uh, the questions. More than half of my portfolio is traditional. Therefore, it is hard to carry around. Will it be fine? My God, there is so much of digitized portfolio. My traditional converted to digi digital, which is again the same kind of question that uh, ma'am has uh, already clear clarified and given clarity which is the highest paying designing course other than fashion designing i'll, I'll suggest one thing uh, for portfolio round uh, it's always good to carry your sketchbooks whatever manual sketches you do uh, i mean first of all try to do uh, in a sketchbook Many times people, what people do is like they'll use loose uh, A4 sheets and then it will uh, be here and there. Try to keep everything nicely, uh, neatly, as already one and MM said, uh, in a sketchbook and then take your sketchbooks along with you. Doesn't matter if you're presenting your portfolio digitally or manually, take your sketchbooks along with you. There will be like uh, multiple panelists, uh, you know, during your interview. You can just hand over your sketchbooks to have a look. Uh, you know, you, you need to you need to keep the uh, panelists busy so that they can keep uh, continue uh, looking at <laughs> then they can, And then they can, of course, uh, can come up with their questions. This is from the other person uh, who's receiving on the other side of the table. <laughs> guys, uh, must be noted. Can we include tactile projects uh, like a piece of apparel? Is portfolio needed for BDES for MIT ID? Yes, it will be. That will be a part, uh, other part of uh, the exam. We will be presenting our portfolio digitally, physically. My God, everyone is going uh, this gaga it, about. It can be. I mean, of course, it depends on what type of work you are presenting. Let's say you want to present a, a video that you have created. You can't make it uh, physical, right? You will have to present it digitally. Okay. When I was presenting my portfolio in um, NID, so I had both sort of type of work. I had interest in motion graphic design, so I had motion graphic videos also, but I had physical portfolio also. So I, I mean, I, mean, I had actually created a uh, like uh, portfolio, printed portfolio, which I carried along with me. Uh, but I also carried a laptop to present those videos right so it depends on the on what kind of work you are you want to present there is no digital or physical digital and physical you know it could be a mix of both or either it could be digital or uh, physical but for so, dst we have an online portfolio round so for that i would suggest make a digital portfolio uh -huh. uh, but the stuff about um, having your sketchbooks you can even have your uh, sketchbooks like handy with you during while you're sitting for the interview any and every kind of material that you have maybe some of it you you know your daily sketches you don't put it in your you know file uh, in your portfolio and but uh, i could maybe ask you do you sketch daily and then like that's when you pull it out and you start showing yes. me Yes, and yes. It's, like, uh, it's very interesting to see. Um, and uh, how Sir mentioned, uh, like a lot of people uh, use loose sheets or uh, you know whatever they can find to draw receipts and all of that. So I used to do that too. But uh, I uh, 
uh, put everything like collected everything right before my portfolio round and made like an art journal with it and had had them believe that i keep this <laughs> and i do it intentionally and paste it there but yeah basically i just put everything together and even when i've drawn on receipts or whatever yeah, i've just pasted it in a uh, presentable form and uh, another excellent point i remember this i had a entirely physical portfolio no nothing digital but i uh, compiled all of my portfolio projects into separate folders because it's for exactly this point that i knew there were going to be three or four panelists and if one of them has my portfolio the other will ask question so I... <laughs> basically that, that is your presence of mind alertness and uh, yes observant as soon as they uttered the word portfolio i just quickly you know handed yeah, them off so that they busy and uh, wherever some of, one of them would ask me a question i would start like, talking to the other uh, interviewer he you know, actually yeah. made this in college with another guy so keeping the conversation about my work um uh, turned out to be like really nice also one more point uh, and uh, yeah sorry i was just uh, i just i was just mentioning that don't uh, use somebody else's work in your portfolio uh, because many times uh, what happens is that in, uh, in your interview they'll ask you to do uh, any sketch or something uh, live in front of them so i mean it's always uh, good to use have your own work don't use anybody else's work <laughs> Actually, and it's also great practice, you know, if you have uh, taken something from somewhere. Let's say you're redesigning something, or you've taken a central idea from somewhere. Giving credits to it is the best thing you can do yes. to be in the safe. Uh, yes. so uh, copyright and all of these things work. Uh, like the law state that you can't be using someone else's work for your personal benefit. So as long as you're not making money off of it, it's still legal, and you're in the right. to take inspiration or to take any piece of work from anywhere but mention that give credits to, to the designer to the company to the website wherever you've taken it from give credits to that and mention what part of the process uses this image like let's say you uh, you know you took some pictures and you converted it into, into a painting but as long as you mention that this picture was clicked by so and so person and i have painted that what that does is it tells me a that you are ethical b that you took the time enough uh, to find out about the artist uh, who took the picture in the first place uh, and that you are interested enough to you know go find out who took that picture and uh, third that i like see if you told me that uh, this is a painting i have made and it's original now uh, we are all using the same platforms i have been on pinterest have seen the photograph somewhere now i will think of you as you know someone who lies and uh, i will start doubting all the work that you have done so yes. better than that it's so yes. much better that you, you just tell me that you have taken this from uh, somewhere and then you whatever you did to it you mention that uh, yes. however little your contribution may be i will it is still better than me thinking that you copied the entire thing actually very well mentioned Yes, oh, yeah. and uh, someone has written how to prepare for GAT section. All right, that That's is. That. I think it is the general aptitude test. The the G the, of course there will be a GK part, hmm. of of the test, and yes, there are hundred and twenty seats for MDES user experience design at MIT ID Indore. uh digital portfolio ma'am has exp uh, explained already i'll just quickly add uh last minute uh, we added again the dst registration link please only the students who have not yet registered for the dst exam uh should access or submit their application not the ones who have already done it is uh, kindly ignore the ones who have already done uh all i have asked the technical person to please uh, also support us with copying all the questions we'll be just having the last 8 minutes uh, before we end this such an uh, amazing interactive it's like uh, you know what do you call a cross the firing kind of uh, <laughs> questions and uh, answers yeah so could you please tell the dates for the entrance exam it is 17th december for mit id Uh, indoor dst online and uh, for pune it is 7th april dat 
which is uh, which is another design aptitude test that they will have on 7th april which one, one very important question that i saw that i think has not been answered someone asked that uh, whether they are applying for bds for uh, bds uh, and they wanted to know if they should make a general portfolio or a uh, discipline specific portfolio uh, for bds uh, uh, what mit does is and what also nid does is that we have a foundation here and then you get to choose your uh, uh, specializations so even if you have a general portfolio that is good uh, and uh, because you are anyways going to select your stream later but let's say as an individual you are very interested in game design or communication design or whatever and your entire portfolio is, is about that that is also not bad at all it just shows me that you are very you know um, focused on that particular thing but a general or a special specific portfolio does not matter as long as you're applying for bds for masters because you have to already select the specialization and we are interviewing you for that for that i would say a special portfolio for that particular field more relevant stuff uh, would be more appreciated yes absolutely which part of the entrance holds more weighted sir uh again depends like what all is there in the exam uh, mostly i mean if i talk about seed exam so there is uh, part a and part b uh, part a will have uh, these uh, spatial reasoning sort of questions etc and then part b will have drawing if you if and only if you clear part a then only your part b will be uh, evaluated so it, it 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 depends like on exam to exam usually uh, i mean usually the drawing part is giving more weightage uh, in the uh, exams if there is drawing part in the exam for example mit id i think uh, in the jitman there is no uh, drawing part right no it will be a uh, visual i mean uh, part of uh, the section a would be yeah. more of uh, visual yeah and if you read the prospectus of uh, all of these uh, entrance exam or uh, institutes you no know, you will get a fair understanding of uh, like which part has more weightage it is very clearly mentioned in uh, the prospectus you just need to read that Yes, and I think uh, reading properly is, of course, uh, one of the key skills. While at least you're giving the exams, yeah. and uh, uh, Anurag has also uh, ha had shared right when you're doing your MCQs, MSQs, you have to. I mean, that is again your uh, presence of mind, and you would know your strength, right? Go for the ones that you know would be your best shot. Yeah. Uh, what is the cutoff of MIT? Yeah, we'll share that with you, ma'am. On which size paper we draw drawings for part B? Like we've said, uh, a drawing will not be a part of the DST at least. Do we have to give another exam for scholarship? No, DST is the design scholarship test, so it is an entrance come scholarship test. Mm -hmm. Mm, that actually I've registered, but I don't get any mail. I'll check that, uh, Radhika. I'll get my. Uh, I'll ask my team to please check on your registration. Mm, what are the topics we cover under GK? Uh, I think there is a syllabus slide um uh, in my deck. I think you can take. Uh, we'll share the uh, deck link with everyone so you can go through the deck. Yes. So yeah, just the last uh, four minutes. Uh, uh, we'll share it here as well as um. Uh, like you know the team will be uh, sending it to the registrations we'll try and send it also a recording of uh, the webinar today we'll be uh, sending it to the registered uh, participants of the webinar i am from from art stream i don't know science basics and all for entrance my math is also weak i mean it's not a problem if your math is weak yeah. there won't be any like math math questions uh you are from art streams it's okay i mean it's good it will work in your favor uh, that is also not a problem science based basics and all for the science basics is like everyday things that we anyway know it doesn't need to it, i mean we don't need to be science stream uh, as such to understand all of those very basic things it's just a common interesting understanding of uh, you know whatever questions there will be and when whenever you will be preparing for you'll get uh, enough understanding of all of these things uh yeah i mean it's not a problem that you know you are not from any specific stream right and again cut off cut off mit see the design scholarship test is again an entrance 
test also a scholarship so scholarship would be of course to the top performers and then of course uh, i think one has to do their best and we'll be uh, surely letting you know the cut off as well how to prepare for general knowledge fastly are there specific criteria or requirements for students interested in applying for scholarship it is our like anurag said the best that you put in your the test when you are appearing and uh, my chances of securing a scholarship for bds program we are we are still 42 uh, questions loaded on the chat and i'll uh, request my uh, technical team to please uh, keep a backup of those so we can help these uh, students uh, even uh, later uh, i've registered i didn't get any mail we'll check on that radhika uh, from silica i know that how to stay motivated then you feel all messed up don't know how what to study as we have a lot of things to do brilliant as in this time in land due to college and classes um I think that's uh, to both of you maybe yeah. that the last <laughs> question i can say <laughs> okay and on a good positive note yes. <laughs> how to stay stay motivated and you feel messed up and don't know how and what to study as we have a lot of things to do. Okay. Uh, I mean, you have a lot of things to do. Of course, we have a lot of things to do when we are preparing for design entrance exam, but we can't take everything all together. We'll have to take one thing at a time. Okay. So first of all, as I already mentioned that make a list, make a proper list that, okay, first of all, you need to le learn this after that, uh, something else, after that, something else, you need to go step by step. Then if you are going step by step, by step, then you will not feel that you have a lot of things to do. You just need to take care of one thing at a time. Okay. So that is uh, how you can prepare, uh, you know, that can help you in staying motivated. Um, what else? Which are board prep, prelim prep as well. Okay. Um, if there are board exams, I mean, if you also have board exams and then uh, prelim preparation exams as well. So as I already mentioned that, um, like give some time to both of it but yeah i mean uh prioritize board exams also uh, i mean prepare for board exams first and then uh, you know whatever time you have uh, remaining then go for prelims exam again there will be a lot of things but yeah i mean you need to take it slowly you don't need to uh, you know uh, feel it okay you need to learn everything and all uh, you know at once take everything slowly then i think it should uh, work in your favor uh right. and portfolio preparation but very less time in your okay portfolio preparation anyway comes after uh the yeah. first round so you will have anyway uh you know time so again first of all uh focus on the first part prelims part and then when you are done uh with it then go for the portfolio round don't do you know uh, both of things parallelly you will have enough time for portfolio round right and uh just with this uh note a positive note take as it comes one at a time let's not rush with things is i think that's the uh, the positive or the optimistic end to the session today ananya ma'am your wishes uh, for the students appearing and of course anurag just all the best and uh, take it easy yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they'll be facing you. <laughs> I'm just like, don't just generally be a decent person and you get through, I think. Um, just don't try to be over smart or condescending yes. and you know, all of that. But don't try to be like, I know better or don't be like so, too defensive. You know, the basic things in life, you at this age, uh, one thinks that they're very smart. I was used to think that I'm I'm the bomb, <laughs> and like I, I know better than what do these boomers know? <laughs> Just, <laughs> drop that attitude; <laughs> it doesn't help. Oh my god! And, yeah. Uh, yeah, just be like yourself, and they usually work. Yeah, all the uh. I mean, from my end, all the very best to everyone who are uh, appearing for the entrance exams. Uh, I don't mind uh, 
helping you guys further if you need any kind of help uh in the jeep ma'am i'm okay if you want to share, uh my contact information i will do that we'll share uh, your uh, contacts of course yes, uh, okay. for any kind of reference or check or a query yes and uh, so yeah. the last bit that uh quickly about dst that the dst uh, design scholarship test for mit id indore exclusively indore campus is on 17 december online from 11 to 2 it's a sunday you can do it from your home any comfortable place you are you would need a device a laptop or a computer supporting with webcam a good internet uh, internet connectivity and uh, the admit cards for the same the the instructions for the test the web link to join everything uh, will be sent on 13 december to you and uh, post that uh, we'll be doing a call up mail for the pepi uh, that is on 21st uh, december pi starts from 26 december we'll be keeping you posted very very timely with all these uh, updates and information and uh, i think this is the time now uh, maybe we we'll end this uh, webinar and all the best you will do the best like you got the experts today right from both uh, the tables the ends of the table thank you guys have a nice uh, evening and a happy sunday thanks everyone uh, and all the best for everything <laughs> ಧನ್ಯವಾದ